Hello everyone, Marie Burns here. It's graduation season and in our world today we have graduations everywhere from preschool to advanced degrees. I'd like to visit with you a little bit about what advice would you give to your younger self if you were back in graduation time of life. You know we always tend to think about holiday time in November and December as being so busy but if you're a parent or grandparent have you ever realized how busy May is? We have Mother's Day, recitals, last days of school, finals, graduations, Memorial Day. Phew! It's no wonder time flies as fast as it does. And just like that, I'm going to my 40th class reunion of the summer. How did that happen? I don't find it wise or healthy to think about regrets in life. Focusing forward is all we can really do to stay positive and make a difference. But if you were to think back now to what you know now, and wish you would have known back then, I bet we all have some thoughts. If you could tell your younger self anything before your graduation, whether it was from high school or secondary school, what would it have been? And have you shared those thoughts and stories with your grandchildren? I was thinking about this and I came up with five things that I wish I had realized sooner and would have told my younger self and have actually started to share a little bit with my children or grandchildren. I think it's important to pass these things on, so hopefully they keep them in mind as they navigate some of life's challenges. Maybe these items will help you think of some wishes or important information you want to share with your children or grandchildren. Number one, stress is real. So invest in yourself via healthy lifestyle behaviors. You know, I was all about the healthy wellness way of life early on, but I also thought stress was way overrated. What's the big issue? Deal with it and move on, right? It is important to understand the physiology of stress. If it's left unmanaged, now we know, and repeated over a long time, it slowly kills you. Do you know anyone who died of a heart attack at a fairly young age due to a high stress job, for example? So translation, exercise, intentionally find ways to relieve stress, and don't stay in a job that dishes out chronic stress. Number two, if you can see it, you can achieve it. I wish I had learned at a younger age about how to create this thing called a vision board so you can set and see goals. I didn't create or know about a vision board until I was an adult. Our young grandchildren often start out wanting to be an astronaut or a professional football player or a ballerina when they grow up. But somewhere along the way, we all seem to lose that I can be whatever I want to be attitude. Intentionally thinking about how you want to live is important at every age. What is important to you in life? What do you need to make those goals come alive? Why don't we learn visualization and meditation and goal setting early on in our education journey? Number three, the superpower of saying no. We women often tend to be encouraged to put others first and to put ourselves last and focus on being a pleaser. Realizing that it's good and healthy to be assertive enough to say no to something you don't want is really a skill we need to practice. Your heart or your body or your wallet may thank you later for mastering that word, no. Number four, tell your money where to go instead of wondering where your money went. I stole that one. It's one of my favorite lines from Dave Ramsey, you know, the financial peace guru. So in other words, spend less than you earn and live within your means. Many couples are opposites when it comes to finances. One might be the penny pincher and the other is a more lavish spender. Dave Ramsey calls those roles the nerd and the free spirit. But as long as couples communicate respectfully, they can actually complement each other well with those different financial personalities. One woman shared with me the other day that if it weren't for her husband, she would probably never spend the money they worked so hard to earn and save and invest. Saving, saving, saving. That was what was ingrained in her since childhood. So much so that she really 
has to force herself to learn to enjoy the spending side of her life. And lastly, number five, pay yourself first. You know, waiting until the day we can afford to fund a Roth IRA or contribute the maximum match to our employer plan or set up an automatic sweep to our savings, we end up wasting the most important compounding years of youth making a decision once to start an automatic investment or savings saves you from making emotional decisions later about should I or shouldn't I or maybe I will wait until and suddenly the years have flown by. So what graduation advice would you have given yourself? No regrets, just wishing you would have realized some things earlier on in life. Grandparents, you know, often have a special relationship with their grandchildren. They may listen to you and your stories more than mom and dad. Have you shared your thoughts as they approach this graduation time in their life? I realize that graduation comes at all ages these days, and it gets pretty formal. This spring, I received an adorable, professionally taken photo of my six-year-old granddaughter's graduation from kindergarten, complete with the cap and gown. <laughs> I remember my children graduating from preschool and eighth grade. So I know it's not just high school or secondary school, but it's a teachable moment opportunity and you can plant age appropriate seeds at various ages. So to help families educate and nudge their children and grandchildren, just to have more discussion around some of these topics, I've written some life event financial checklists. So in this season of graduation, I invite you to check out the link below for my before and after high school graduation or before and after secondary school graduation financial checklist. You know, each generation wants a better life, don't we, for those that come after us. So sharing stories, lessons learned, and coulda, woulda, shoulda thoughts can help toward that desire, which is a win-win for everyone. <laughs>